Now that Health Canada has approved the Moderna vaccine, we have the green light to start rolling it out across the country. And Moderna's vaccine will land in Canada, specifically in the territories, on December 28th. So, two vaccines, two ways to help protect Canadians from COVID-19. By the end of next month, public health officials in this country say we will have 1.2 million doses delivered. Infectious diseases specialists Dr. Zane Chagla and Dr. Lenora Saxinger are here tonight to answer some of your questions. Thank you both for making time for us as always. Dr. Chagla, I want to start with you because online this morning you call the news of this approval a game changer. Why is that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think apples to apples, this is the same as the Pfizer vaccine in terms of its efficacy, uh, you know, what it'll do in terms of uh, reduction of COVID-19 symptomatic disease and those who get inoculated with it. The major difference is that cold chain. And so this vaccine can be stored at minus 20, which is reasonably the same as many other vaccines that you see at your family doctor's office or at the pharmacy. Uh, and it can be even thawed out to stay at 30 days at, you know, a refrigeration temperature, two to eight degrees, which is, you know, incredibly apparent in most healthcare settings and most commercial settings. And so when we're talking about a vaccine that's going to get out into every Canadian, we've had experience with the Pfizer vaccine now for the last week. It's difficult. It, it's workable, but you have to really put it in urban centers, health sciences centers and research institutes with the ultra cold fridges. This really means a vaccine that can get out into the communities, get out into remote areas and get out into the general population. We heard earlier in the show about some of the differences between Pfizer-BioNTech shot and Moderna, specifically in terms of who they tested in their trials. Pfizer-BioNTech tested people in several countries, South Africa, Turkey, the U.S., Germany, for example. Moderna tested only Americans. So given that, is one shot better than the other, Dr. Saxinger? Well, there's no evidence that they're actually very different at all. I mean, they have a very similar mechanism of action. They have very similar efficacy in the trial populations, which are very, very large trials. And so I don't think anyone can really say that either one of them is truly better in terms of how well they work. And um, and they have very similar protocols as well. The main difference is the, the cold chain and also the uh, timing of the second shot. And aside from that, I think people shouldn't worry about which one they might be up for. Understanding the differences in how uh, ethnic, different ethnicities respond, though, to uh, a medication, a vaccine, how important is that, though? I don't think we've seen any significant difference in terms of immune response to natural infection between populations, and so I don't think we should necessarily worry too much about that. Of course, there will be ongoing monitoring of the efficacy of the vaccines, and also there'll be post-marketing monitoring as they're rolled out as well. So I, I don't think that that seems like a significant concern to me. Nadine Levictoire sent us a question. She lives in Rockland, Ontario. How do I know which one is best for me? And will I have a say in deciding which one I want? I, you know, unfortunately, I think, you know, given the scarcity of the vaccine and how precious a resource this is, what's going to dictate likely what people get what vaccine isn't necessarily going to be which one they want. It's going to be which one is available. And really based on the cold chain requirements, where they live, if they have access to a Pfizer center, or is it going to be the Moderna vaccine? We are going to see with some of the data that comes out with this phase four post-marketing surveillance, there may be subtle differences that make adjustments to who gets what. But for now, I think it really is going to be what vaccine is available. For the majority, I think Moderna is going to be the one that's available. But if you do live in an urban center where this has been set up, then perhaps the Pfizer vaccine would be offered to you as well. Again, it's just what, what's there rather than what you want. Well, one of the other questions we have is from Joss Widjaya, a mother of 11-year-old triplets in Port Moody, British Columbia. She sent us this. My COVID question is, I heard that they weren't doing any testing for the vaccine on children under the age of 16. So therefore, they don't qualify for the vaccination. Is the only way to protect my children and other children is through herd immunity? Thanks. So we do know Pfizer-BioNTech did test its vaccine on people 16 and older, as I understand it. Moderna, though, tested people who are 18 years of age and older. So, Dr. Saxinger, what does it mean for children? Well, in any group where we do not yet have data, that doesn't mean that it doesn't work and it doesn't mean um, that we will not have data. So with children and other groups that we don't have much data on, I expect that we will be learning a lot more over the coming months. And because children are much less at risk of severe disease 
and outcomes like hospitalization and the like, um, I think that they would tend to be a little bit later in the rollout anyway. So there is work ongoing right now to define um, the efficacy in children. And there's studies, you know, happening um, kind of in real time and as we speak to figure that out. So I don't think that people should worry that children will not be able to get the vaccine. It's just that we are still collecting information as we go. Many of the questions we're getting are about timing, as in when will it be someone's turn to get the shot after this initial set of immunizations for those who need it most. Denise Williams wrote to us about that. She's in Belleville, Ontario. How do we know when the vaccine has arrived to our community? And also, once it's arrived in our community, what is the process of ensuring that we do get the vaccine? So I think that um, because the vaccine is being delivered at the level of a public health unit, it'll be very similar to what people have seen with influenza vaccine campaigns, for example, where they'll be notified by local media, by announcements. Um, and I, I think that there's a possibility that there could be attempts to really target the groups at highest risk to let them know first. And so if you're in an older age group in congregate living or something like that, you'd probably get a specific notification from public health. But I don't think the details are entirely worked out, um, and nor should they be yet, because, uh, because I think that it'll be different depending on where you live. We appreciate your time. As always, Dr. Saxinger, Dr. Chagla, we will speak again, I'm sure. Have a great Christmas and New Year.